G'day from Las Vegas, and I can tell you this race was always going to be controversial. It's had a lot of negative comments in the lead up to it. But how did things go on Saturday? Things went wild. And Las Vegas turned on a show the likes of which I have never seen in my life. All the details from behind the scenes in eight seconds time. Well, first up, a lot of the media just did not want this event to be successful. And you might have seen Toto Wolf getting stuck into one of those journalists and giving him a bit of a snarl up at the press conference. Have you ever spoken good about someone and written a good word? You should about all these people that have been out here. Liberty has done an awesome job. How this race differentiated itself from others is in the celebrity side of things. Now, I know a lot of you hate that idea, but it was absolutely full on. In the paddock on Saturday night, we had this huge big setup, much like a, a Hollywood premiere would have with a black carpet and all the drivers and all the celebs were invited to come down that carpet. Now, I believe it was only a few drivers who bothered to go on that carpet and answer questions, but certainly a lot of the celebrities did so. So who did we have in-house over the weekend? Kylie Minogue, Will I Am, Usain Bolt was there, Axel Rose, frontman for Guns N' Roses. We had Brad Pitt, managed to catch him. It was a fluke sighting because he was only out in the open for maybe 30 seconds. Rene Zellweger was there wearing a cap. Hard to spot if you don't know what to look for. Steve Aoki, the DJ, Rob McElhenney and his wife, Shaquille O'Neal, a powerful man, always has a great presence in the paddock. Heidi Klum, have a look at this top. My gosh, how did that stay on? Patrick Dempsey was there. He's been at a few races this year. Paris Hilton, Justin Bieber was there. He waved the flag on the finish line and Martin Garrix, DJ extraordinaire, who I did have a chat with briefly and asked, would Lando be going to his nightclub show that night? And he said, yes. But I'm not sure Lando ended up making it there because as you know, he had an accident and was taken to the medical center for a routine checkup. Oh, and being this is the first Las Vegas Grand Prix in a very long time, well done to Race Weekend for getting this Las Vegas edition out now. Now this is not just a magazine to be read, this is to be proudly displayed on your coffee table. And if you're a Lewis Hamilton fan, you'll love it because there's lots of Lewis Hamilton content in it because his Plus 44 brand has provided a number of images and some background. I love the feel of the magazine, I love the images. And given that the Las Vegas Grand Prix was such a huge hit on the weekend and the people in this restaurant are all in a grid that it was a magnificent event, I think this is a great way to celebrate this first LVGP. But I should point out this is a limited edition. When they're gone, they're gone. You can pick up a copy now for $40 includes free postage in North America and $10 everywhere else. Get yourself a copy of this, you'll love it. I'm gonna draw your attention to Veronica here. She is a model with some 6.2 million followers and her outfit on Sunday night was an absolute mind bender. She was immensely popular with the media up and down the paddock. The sphere, well, that certainly stamps its mark on this race as something spectacular. It is so big. You can see it from so many places around the track, but when you're close up to it and the cars are small, it pretty much dominates the uh, landscape. On the subject of celebrities, there were plenty of very expensive watches being worn by people. But I want to go back one race ago. I did a bit of homework on this watch that we spotted on Lance Stroll's wrist in Brazil. This is actually a brand new watch. It had never been seen in public before. It's called a Neo Bridges Aston Martin Edition. It's a skeleton design, so you can see right into the workings. One of the interesting things about this watch is it normally comes on a black rubber strap. But Lance's watch featured a cloth band made from Aston Martin race suits. Now, I thought that was a nice touch. Big watch, 45 millimeter diameter, and only 250 in existence. Well, 249, because Lance got that one. What else were people wearing? Oh, this lady was lovely. She had this belt that she'd made out of model cars. Now, I'd actually seen something similar before, um, but I did stop and have a chat with her and asked if she had a watch on. And she had a magnificent Patek, which is a very expensive watch and hard to get. And still on the subject of jewellery, these marshals were in typical Las Vegas bling. Still on the subject of celebs, Donny Osmond sang the national anthem. I remember Donny from when I was a kid. A lot of you younger people have no idea, but uh, he still got a voice. Did a great job with the national anthem. And when he finished, he happened to turn to his manager, who by pure fluke was standing right in front of me, and give me this magnificent fist bump. It's fair to say that there was a lot of money in Las Vegas over the weekend with all these celebrities and people paying such big prices for tickets. And I went up with Maverick Helicopter for a, a tour of the track the other day and I was amazed to see the corporate jet car park completely full. I believe many couldn't be accommodated and had to go to other airports. 
Kevin Magnuson's a funny guy. I happened to pop into the Haas suite where Nico Hulkenberg was signing 50 prints, which will be offered at some point on my website. And I did notice that this fella had this stuck on his back. This is actually the rundown for the day in the Haas suite. And I think it was Kevin or his trainer, Nikolai, one or the other, stuck it to his back and he wandered around with it for quite some time, much to the delight of everybody in there. After the Nico signings, I went down to the Aston Martin garage where Fernando Alonso signed 50 of this print. But what I asked him to do, which he gratefully did, was to write one to me. And I took that picture down to Sergio Perez and asked if he'd sign it as well. And this is the end result for me. And then I asked Sergio to sign a picture and put a note to Fernando. And what did he write? Fernando, one of my best battles, and even more because he was against you. My idol when I was a kid. And then I asked Fernando to write something to Sergio, which he did. Now, loosely translated, that means it's always nice to be with you, both on the track and off. Hugs, Fernando. Now, just for something different, this race, I borrowed a Hasselblad X2D. This is a mighty piece of kit, pretty handy in hand-to-hand -hand combat because it weighs a ton, it's very solid. You wouldn't use it for track action, but it produces 100 megapixel files, and this is the sort of shot you get, and when you zoom in, look at the clarity. Thank you to those people who turned up for my meet and greet on Friday out the front here of the Paris Hotel, and you'll hear from those people at the end of my video. I must admit I did have some fears that the race might be a bit of a dud, but having photographed and having been there the whole day, and then talked to probably 30 or 40 people on the way out, and I asked them, what did you think, how did you rate it? Not one negative comment. Everyone said it was amazing. Eight out of 10, nine out of 10, we'll be back. One person said they wouldn't come to the practice days, but they would not miss the race. Well done, Las Vegas, for actually getting it up. And yes, we had all that drama on the Thursday, and, I, and on that matter, I was out at the um, Sphere when I watched the police come and kick everyone out. It was a pretty disappointing scene. What a lot of you said was, hey, if you didn't want us to be there, why did you tell us just before the thing started? We waited hours and hours, and then you kicked us out. I understand why, it's because they didn't have enough staff. And yes, I know that everybody got a $200 voucher to spend on merchandise or whatever else it was. Very disappointing. But understandable. And after they kicked out all the people from the stands, a woman came down who had a walkie-talkie and she was telling all the photographers, we had to leave. No, 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 no. We did not have to leave. We get our instructions from the FIA. So we stood firm, there was about a dozen of us, and in the end, the person just gave up. Rightly so, too, because that's our job, is to document what goes on. Other things I noticed. Oh, the car numbers on the McLaren, I loved. And there were so many references to gambling, both on the cars, I love this Williams livery, you can see some, some chips here on the side of this Red Bull car. And even in pit lane, they had a mock-up of a card table. And at the end of the race, I did notice some dice in that particular area. Didn't photograph it, maybe you've seen it. Oh, and another thing, the cap design for McLaren featured dice on it. But of course, you would never have these two numbers together. A five and a two are always opposite, six and a one opposite, every opposites have to add up to seven. So an inconsistency that probably not many of you noticed. Like this inconsistency, an apostrophe for a plural. Don't need one. One of my biggest TikToks last week with well over a million views was all about the opaque film that was placed over the glass on the bridges so people couldn't walk across the bridge and get a free view of the track. But I noticed there were a lot of people who didn't need to look through the glass. These people here on race day were actually sat on top of their cars out front of this property. And on Thursday night, well, it was Friday morning, 3, 4 a.m., when I was walking the back section of the track, there were lots of people with good views that had paid absolutely nothing. I guess it's impossible to block out the whole circuit to everyone. A couple of things about staying at the hotels along the track here. When the track was hot, in other words, blocked off to the general public, they park trucks across the driveways of the hotel for some reason, and then they send people up to your rooms. We do these checks just because we have F1 here and because of the Mandalay Bay shooting back in 2018. Any large event they have on the strip now, they have security check any possible areas. I also thought that maybe when the race was on, or certainly sessions were on, that it'd be dead in the casinos, but my wife was here in Paris and other casinos looking around while the track was hot, and she said that wasn't the case, indeed it was busy. Which is good because the casinos don't want everybody over there and no one playing the tables or eating at these restaurants. Let's go to the pre-race entertainment. I didn't see any of it. I was busy photographing celebrities 
But my wife, who was up in one of the corporate boxes, said it was absolutely amazing, and I reckon she's a tough critic. After the race, it was a standard park Fermé, but just a quick one, then the drivers were shuttled over the Bellagio for interviews and then brought back for a rather elaborate podium celebration on top of those magnificent monster stages. As part of the media, we are very well looked after. We had some lovely food and some nice surroundings, but the media centre was a crazy distance from the track. But thank you to the organiser who organised us a cap, one of these beautiful insulated mugs. Thanks to Red Bull for this beautiful Las Vegas shirt. And I love the different coloured race suits for their drivers. In particular, I thought Max looked stunning in white. And Saturday night was the coldest night of the four. And thankfully, Jack Dewan organised me one of these. This was an Alpine Palace collaboration. My sons tell me I'm quite lucky to have one of these. They're much sought after. So summing things up, the Las Vegas Grand Prix was an absolute winner after a slow start. Next year, they'll have ironed out the lighting in the paddock. They'll have sorted out the media centre being not quite so far. It'll be a lot quicker with the closing and opening of the roads. And we should get another absolute cracker of a race with plenty of overtaking and lots of razzle and dazzle. Please like this video and for those who haven't subscribed, here's your opportunity. Oh, and here's a whole lot of stuff you'd have a look at. Thanks for watching. Hey,